Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Today, one of the biggest trends in computing is the rise of voice interfaces and artificial intelligence. In this video, I'm therefore going to be experimenting with Amazon's Alexa voice service by installing it for free on a Raspberry Pi. Right, in this project I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 3, which I've got in this uh, Flerk Kodi case, which I've shown you in previous videos. You don't have to use a Raspberry Pi 3, although it is what Amazon recommend. You can use a Raspberry Pi 2, that is supported but not recommended, probably because of the processing power available. But if you do use a Raspberry Pi 2, you will have to add a Wi-Fi dongle. Now, talking of things you have to add, if you try to talk to a Raspberry Pi, you find you won't get anywhere because a Raspberry Pi hasn't got a microphone. So we need to add a microphone to the Pi. And the microphone I'm going to use is this one, which is from Kenobo, but any generic USB microphone will do. It is a nice small USB microphone. I'll just get this thing out. Hopefully, there we are. You'll see it's a very, very small microphone. I would just say when you get a microphone like this, do shop around because you can pay a couple of pounds or dollars for these. You can pay 10 pounds or dollars for these, so make sure you don't pay over the odds. And we can take this and plug it into our Raspberry Pi 3. There we are. It's now got a microphone. It can hear us. We also need to add, of course, a speaker so we can hear the Pi, we can hear Alexa. And I'm going to use this speaker, which is a speaker I normally use plugged into a, a small music system in my living room, but it'll do perfectly well on the Pi. So we'll plug that into the Pi's 3.5 millimeter audio jack. There we are. And uh, as you can see, we now have the Pi set up with a speaker and a microphone, all waiting to run Alexa. Now, admittedly, it won't be quite this neat. I need to add a power cable for the Pi, a power cable to the speaker, and also to set things up, at least initially, I'm going to be adding the usual USB keyboard, mouse, and HDMI connector. So, here we are on the Pixel desktop on our Raspberry Pi 3, and I should tell you right from the start that all the instructions we need to load the Alexa voice service onto a Raspberry Pi have been made available on uh, GitHub at uh, github forward slash Alexa. And all you need to do when you get here to get these instructions is to go to the, uh, the sample app, click on that, and then it'll load in. And then you need to go all the way down to the bottom of this page, lots of exciting stuff there, and click on a uh, Raspberry Pi. And then there's a fairly comprehensive set of instructions, about a very comprehensive set of instructions you need to follow through. So I'm not going to spend too much time going through every little bit here. I will show you everything, but I'll speed through because you can follow these instructions. But before we do that, a few other things. First of all, we're going to be creating various account details as we go along. So I've opened up here a document. I open it up there in a LibreOffice writer where I can store those details. The other thing you want to make sure of is you've got all your audio set up to work with the microphone and speaker we looked at earlier. So first of all, I will go down to uh, Preferences and uh, Audio Device Settings, and you'll see no controls are visible there, for that is the standard Raspberry Pi system on board. I'm going to select the uh, audio system. I'm going to select the volume control there just to make sure we can, uh, we can see that. There it is. But more importantly, I'm going to select the um, USB PN plug and play sound device. That's our microphone. And I'm going to select the controls there, and I'll select those in there as well. And you can see now we've got the microphone at what their full volume, and actually the auto gain is set as well. So make sure you've got all your audio working that way on. You also want to make sure if you are going to use a speaker, the sound will come to the speaker. So we'll launch a terminal. We'll be using a lot of terminal stuff in this video. And here I'll type sudo raspi config to go into the configuration. And if we then go down to uh, advanced options, I think it's in there, and down to audio there. We need to force 3.5 millimeter headphone jack audio, so it'll come out of our speaker. So I'll uh, select that, and uh, that should be okay. And then we can just go down to finish, and the audio is all set up. I'll leave the terminal there, because we'll need it later on. But now it's time for us to go and create an Amazon developer account. So we'll go back to the web, and uh, we need to go to uh, developer.amazon.com. So I'll open that up in a new tab over there. You can link your developer account to an existing Amazon account, but I'm going to create a new account. And so initially, I'll quickly put in some basic details for that. And uh, at the end of the process, we have to accept the agreement. 
And I've now got an Amazon developer account. Do I plan to monetize apps? No. Do I plan to monetize by display ads? No. And I need to go to Alexa and then under Alexa voice service, get started. And uh, then in the next screen, we need to register a product type, which is going to be a device. And then we need to enter a device type ID where I'm going to put Raspberry Pi 3 and a display name where I'm going to put Raspberry Pi. We now need to enter a security profile for the device. So we'll select new profile and enter a security profile name of Alexa Pi 3 and a security profile description of Raspberry Pi 3 Alexa profile. And next, and it's given me here lots of important information which we're gonna need later on. So I'm gonna try and take a copy of this or I'll copy the, uh, that's, that's what the security profile idea. I'm gonna copy these across to my other document. It'll take me a second. And uh, there we are, I've got all this information saved for uh, later use, so that's good. So I can now go back here. I can now click on the Web Settings tab where we need to edit the allowed origins and add another allowed origin, which is going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 3000. And then for allowed return URLs, we need to enter HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 3000 forward slash auth response, all as specified for us by Amazon. And that should all be fine, and we can now click on next. Uh, we've now gone to create a new device type. Uh, we need to have an image, uh, which is 142 by 130 pixels. Uh, I've already created an image, as a surprise. Uh, choose an image. It should be in a pie and uh, pictures. And uh, there it is. Look, it's come up the first one. And open. And, uh, oh, there we are. Look, it looks like a Raspberry Pi. Isn't, isn't that nice? Um, the category, I'm going to call it another description. That will do for that. Do we have plans to make it generally available? No. Do we have plan? Is it a children's product? No. And uh, there we are. Submit. And there we are. We seem to have created ourselves a registered product for our Alexa device. So that's the end of that process. Now the final thing we need to do is to go to another web page if we follow any instructions we've got and go to a particular web address where we're going to enable our security profile. And on this page, we need to select a security profile, which will be hopefully, oh, there we are, Alexa Pi 3. And we need to confirm. We need to give a consent privacy notice URL. Now, according to the Amazon instructions, we can give something made up here. So I'll give the one they actually given their own instructions. And we don't need to put in an image and we can press on save. And there we are, we can see that seems to have worked. So now we have a fully working system on Amazon and it's now high time to start installing some Alexa software on the Pi. So we now need to install some software on the Pi. So we'll uh, minimize our web browser. We're now back in the terminal and uh, in the terminal, we need to actually download and clone the, the app. So I just need to change to the uh, desktop, which is where we'll put the files. And I'm gonna get the files from uh, GitHub. I'm gonna do a git clone, all according to the Amazon instructions. And press enter. That looks quite encouraging. And that has finished. And we now need to alter that clone of the app so it's got the details of our particular device. And here I'm going to actually deviate slightly from the instructions just so you can see things a bit more clearly. I'm gonna launch another terminal here. I'm gonna do sudo idle just to bring up my favorite editor, which has larger fonts in it. That's why I'm gonna use it. Uh, but you could use a nano editor if you wanted to. And I'm gonna open and I'm gonna to go to a desktop. There's the app we just put in. I need to alter all files and there we have our automated install file and I'll open that. And I'll just make sure those of you with overscan can still see the screen. And so here we've got to put in our particular um, details, which you might remember are stored, if you're keeping up with this, in our uh, document over here from Libra Office. So we first of all need a product ID, which is, um, not stirred there at all. The product ID was actually uh, the very, we used this very early on. That was a 
Raspberry Pi 3, at least I'm pretty certain it was. Uh, we had the client ID. The client ID is clearly this thing, which is super wizzo long. Paste that in there. Why didn't it go on top? No idea, but it's all right. That'll be okay. And now we need the secret, the client secret, and the client secret is over here. If I can get it correctly, there we are. There's the client secret, and that will go in there. So we've now got the uh, product ID and the client ID and the client secret set up. And so if I just uh, file and save, that should be fine. I can close that down. And I can also, I think, close down this as well. I'll do a file save first just to make certain. But uh, always best to make sure you've got details of that saved properly, but we might as well get our screen a bit clearer, clear up some memory. Close that as well. Close that too. And we can now back in this window, run the install script. So if I just check where we need to be. We need to uh, change to Alexa, AVS sample app. Good job we didn't give it a long name. There we are. And now I simply need to uh, run the automated install script. So dot um, rated install sh. Do we agree to doing this? Yes, we do. Do we have an account? Yes, I do. Is that my information? I'll assume it is. Yes, it is. Which locale is going to be two for me? I need to put five millimeters of jack. Uh, yes, I am. One. Do you want to enable wait word detection? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, this is very exciting, isn't it? And something seems to be happening. And this stage takes about 30 minutes, apparently. So Amazon even suggests you go and have a cup of tea. So I will indeed go and have a cup of tea and come back when this thing is finished. And there we are. I've had a nice cup of tea and everything's been installed on the Pi. Hurrah! And I think just to, uh, so we've had so much else going on here, I think we'll close this down now and we'll close that down as well. That's all been done. And uh, everything should now be installed and ready to run Alexa on the Raspberry Pi. So here we are back on the Pixel desktop and we're going to use the terminal to actually make Alexa work. We need to run up three terminal windows, or at least three terminal window tabs, again using the Amazon instructions. There we are in the right directory, and then we need to type now. And there we are, we've got that running. We'll now do a file and we'll open up a new tab. Could be a new terminal window, but I think a new tab is neater, although it seems to have been a Messing up my spacing doing that, dear me, doing me, didn't want that. And uh, here we'll again change to the uh, opening directory. And now we're going to type. And there we are. This will take a little second. And we now need to uh, log in, so we need to click on yes to go to our browser. And there's the browser. And because it's Chrome, it doesn't like this very much because it thinks it might not be safe. So we need to click on advance. Only do this the first time you do it and we'll go proceed to local host. Now I need to put in our details. And there we are, that's running. So I'll just minimize that. And over here, I can click on OK. And you'll notice we've now got this little box on the screen for Alexa, which actually will work by clicking a button. We've got the first two bits of this actually working. So if I click on listen, What is 45 times 27? 45 multiplied by 27 is 1,215. Yes, Alexa works, but we can do it a little bit better than this. We can actually go to uh, here and do another tab, a new tab there. Oh, it doesn't like, I should have learned by now, it doesn't like doing this resizing thing with tabs, does it? Never mind. I should have opened three separate windows, but we'll do this. And now we need to once more change back to the correct directory. Yes, I could have just got up one level there, couldn't I? Never mind. And we now to finally need to type CD and be very careful there with the capitals again, what's capitalized, what isn't. 
and that seems to be working. And if it is working, I should be able to say something like this. Alexa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And there we are. We've now got Alexa running on the Raspberry Pi so that I can actually wake it up by saying the word Alexa. What is 2 plus 2? The sum of 2 and 2 is 4. And this means we can have a conversation in two ways with our Raspberry Pi courtesy of Amazon. And so here we are. I've uh, tidied everything up. I've taken out the HDMI cable and the keyboard and the mouse cable. So we've got the uh, speaker and Pi sitting there waiting to be talked to. So I can go, uh, Alexa. Hello. Hi there. Alexa. What is the weather in London? Right now in London, United Kingdom. It's 57 degrees with clear skies and sun. Today's forecast has mostly sunny weather, with a high of 57 degrees and a low of 45 degrees. Alexa, are you an artificial intelligence? That's right. Hi. Alexa, how old are you? I was originally released on Echo on the 6th of November 2014. Alexa, what is a Raspberry Pi? The Raspberry Pi is a series of small single board computers developed in the United Kingdom by the Raspberry Pi Foundation to promote the teaching of basic computer science in schools and in developing countries. Alexa, is this really cool? Hmm, I don't know. But you can take a look at the Bing search link I added in the Alexa app. Well, there we are. I think that's probably a good place to end this conversation because I see she's not going to get a bit confused moving forward. Why am I saying she? It's an artificial intelligence. It's an it. Anyway, Alexa. Goodbye. Bye for now. Today, Amazon's Alexa is the most popular AI voice service, and it's great that they've released the resources as we've used here so you can install it for free on a Raspberry Pi. Later in 2016, we've also heard that Google will be launching some AI services, some machine learning tools to install on a Raspberry Pi, and they will of course look at those just as soon as they're available. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoy what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.